Good Wednesday morning to you from Cashers, North Carolina. As always, it's great to be together for this time of prayer, to lift our hearts, to give our thanks, and to pray for the world, its people, the church. So let us do the same, uh, centering our hearts, uh, taking a look out here at this beautiful valley, and then we'll begin. O Lord, open our lips, and a mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with a song, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who pours out on all who desire it the spirit of grace and supplication. Deliver us when we draw near to you from coldness of heart and wanderings of mind, that with steadfast thoughts and kindled affections we may worship you in spirit and in truth, as taught by your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue reading from Galatians, now in chapter 5. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. Listen, I, Paul, am telling you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no benefit to you. Once again, I testify to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obliged to obey the entire law. You who want to be justified by the law have cut yourselves off from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. The only thing that counts is faith, working through love. You are running well. Who prevented you from obeying the truth? Such persuasion does not come from one who calls you. A little yeast leavens a whole batch of dough. I am confident about you in the Lord, that you will not think otherwise. But whoever it is that is confusing you will pay the penalty. But my friends, why am I still being persecuted if I am still preaching circumcision? In that case, the offense of the cross has been removed. I wish those who would unsettle, who unsettle you would castrate themselves. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves one to another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle is the second song of Isaiah from chapter 55. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion and to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, 
but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Matthew chapter 16. The Pharisees and Sadducees came, and to test Jesus, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. He answered them, When it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. Then he left them and went away. When the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread. Jesus said to them, Watch out, and beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They said to one another, It is because we have brought no bread. And becoming aware of it, Jesus said, You of little faith, why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive? Do you not remember the five loaves for the five thousand, and how many baskets are gathered? Or the seven loaves for the four thousand, and how many baskets you gathered? How could you fail to perceive that I was not speaking about bread? Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they understood that he had not told them to beware of the yeast of the bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now pray in the words that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our prayers today, first for the beauty of creation as seen in the people of God. O oh God, you have created all peoples in your image. We thank you for the wonderful diversity of races and cultures in this world. Enrich our lives by ever-widening circles of fellowship and show us your presence in those who differ most from us until our knowledge of your love is made perfect in your love for all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We give you thanks, most gracious God, for the beauty of earth and sky and sea, for the riches of mountains and plains and rivers, for the songs of birds and the loveliness of flowers. We praise you for these good gifts and pray that we might safeguard them to our posterity. Grant that we may continue to grow in our grateful enjoyment of your abundant creation and to the honor and glory of your name, now and forever. Amen. And thus a longer prayer of thanksgiving. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your Spirit that we may know Christ and make Christ known, and through Christ and at all times and in all places, 
may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. It's great to be with you this Wednesday. Look forward to seeing you next time. Go in peace, stay well, stay faithful. God bless.